Welcome to the Horses Advocate Radio Show. I'm so grateful that you're spending your time here with me today. I am Jeff Tucker, and these are my opinions, observations, and experiences based on working with horses since 1973 and a horse vet since 1984. Please remember, while I am a veterinarian, I'm not your veterinarian. Only he or she can diagnose and treat your horse. Please visit thehorsesadvocate.com for more topics and in-depth articles, photos, videos, and courses. Thank you for seeking honest information and helping your horses thrive in a human world. Hey everybody, it's Doc T. It's another uh, episode of the Horse Advocate Podcast, and thanks for joining us. One of the biggest questions I get in equine dentistry is, um, how often should I fill up my horse's teeth? And this is such a great question. It's such a common question, but it has a very different answer. It's not every X amount of months or every other year or, you know, depends on how old the horse is. There's a bigger factor than all of this. It is the threshold of pain. And what I mean by that is if I put a pebble in your shoe and I put a pebble in your friend's shoe and I send you running down uh, the lane or the aisleway, one of you is going to say, ouch, this hurts. I can't move another step. You might even start crying. Well, the other person just says, what's, what's your problem? It's just a pebble in the shoe. Let's keep jogging. That's what we mean by a threshold of pain. Another way of saying is some guys are tough and some guys are wimps. And your horse lays somewhere between the extremes. And I have seen some horses with no problems. It, you know, they have a mouth that in another horse would be not a problem, but in this horse is untrainable because it hurts so much. And the whole purpose of taking of floating horses' teeth is to remove all sharp points that are causing pain in the horse's mouth. That's it. Now, when it goes from prevention to correction is somewhere between six and 12 months in most horses. Now, there are so many factors. For instance, age of the horse. Young horses have very soft enamel. They get sharper quicker, and the, you know, the more they chew and the softer the teeth are, the sharper they're gonna get, the quicker they're gonna get. The frequency of floating has to be increased. When I was doing uh, race horses, um, they're running as two, three, four-year-olds, and they're shedding out caps all the time, the baby teeth. The baby teeth are those um, deciduous uh, cheek teeth and incisor, te incisor teeth that come out. And as they shed, they can sometimes get dislodged and create a lot of pain. And that pain, again, is a limiting factor in some of these horses' mouths. So in young horses between uh, two and a half and four and a half years of age, they're shedding 24 caps. And that's a really critically important time. Plus, their um, cheek teeth are very soft. So uh, three or four times a year, they have to be uh, addressed. So the teeth have to be looked at. That's really, um, really important if you're trying to go from point A to point B as fast as you can. Um, but over five years of age, they have a full mouth. So you may not have to have um, a more, as frequent floating uh, as three or f every three to four months. Uh, there it's usually six months, but I've had some dressage horses and I'm picking on them because oftentimes they'll put in two bits in their mouth. Um, and when they do, they're putting in space occupying mass that creates uh, more pressure on the tongue and the cheeks to push up against these, um, sharp teeth. For instance, uh, if my fingers represent the back teeth and my face represents the tongue, a lot of horses have sharp edges going right into the tongue. And you put in a space occupying mass, which is what you call a bit, and then you put a nose band on top of it, and these cheeks just get, sh you know, the tongue just gets pressed into these uh, sharp edges. And the horse tries to take the tongue out, and they fight, and they hold back, and they, and they resist. A good floating job will take the teeth and make them safe so the tongue can set right in between the teeth without any sharp edges going in. That makes all the difference in the world. Those are the back bottom cheek teeth. Now, the other interesting spot is the first bottom cheek tooth can get razor sharp because the tongue is constantly going over that tooth. And that word is, uh, I want to use is called stropping. That's the word stop with an R, strop. And what happened was granddad used to shave his face with a long razor and then would take and he'd go back and forth on the leather strap, which is called a strop, and he'd be stropping the razor. That's how he got his razor really sharp to shave the next day. Well, the tongue is like the strop. 
and the tongue keeps going in and out, in and out, in and out. Every day, 25,000 chews a day, that's up to 50,000 outs and ins of the tongue that polishes that tooth and makes it razor sharp. And it's usually the first bottom cheek teeth and last bottom cheek teeth that get the sharpest. Now, uh, add on top of that, another layer of complexity, if you will, is a lot of horses right in front of the first cheek teeth that's right where the bit lays, has excessive fat tissue on the bars, on the, on the gums of the, of the mouth. I personally call them flabby cheeks. It was a name I gave it a decade ago. Uh, it has nothing to do with cheeks, I know, but it's fat. And if you look up flabby cheeks on the, in, in Google, you'll find an article I wrote with a picture where there's this pool of fat laying on the bar of the mouth, sitting in front of that first cheek tooth. About half the horses that I see have flabby cheeks, the rest don't. Of those, half of them could care less. So it's down to 25% or one in four horses that have this excess tissue that really are concerned about it being pinched because the front of their first cheek tooth is pointing like the bow of the tugboat. And what we try and do is we move it into a bow of a, a whoops, bow of the Titanic. Sorry about that. And we want to make it in the bow of a tugboat, nice and round and smooth. So when the bit comes back and pulls that fatty tissue in there, it doesn't get trapped on that first sharp point. So we round it up. A lot of people call this a bit seat, but at an AAP convention that I was at, when they everyone started to discuss what a bit seat was, I was shocked to understand that nobody there I mean, nobody understood what a bit seat was and what it was there for. So I told them all about flabby cheeks, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of people never heard of that. But there's two other things that help um, uh, this bit problem. Number one, of course, number uh, three, number one is to round that first cheek tooth off. You don't have to be aggressive. Just round off the sharp edges. Number two, put in the smallest diameter bit. Fat bits push more uh, tissue back. So thin bits do less damage. That goes against our old uh, saying that um, thin bits are more severe. I found that thin bits are less severe in these horses because they're less mass and they're not going to push that fat back there. And then the last thing is work on your hands. <laughs> Sorry, that's the sad truth. But you have to learn how to ride with your seat and not be jerking on the mouse all like this because some of these horses will flip over. Some of these horses end up on the kill truck because nobody's listening to them. They have this excess tissue on the first bottom cheek tooth. And what's really cool is, um, now I'm going to tell you something it can be dangerous, okay? But if you stand right in front of your horse and you take your thumbs and stick them right in here, well, I can't do it like that. Uh, and feel the bottom. Just do one cheek at a time. And what I do is I send, um, I'm going to grab a pen here. I send uh, something in here, not a pen, but something like, uh, for me, it's a float blade, but something hard. Uh, hard I guess I can't. Uh, uh, that way you can feel without getting your uh, finger pinched. But you should feel that first bottom cheek tooth. Put your thumbs down on the bar of the mouth and then push back. And you'll push a whole wave of fat that goes over the first cheek tooth. And some of these horses won't even let you do that. But as soon as you feel it, you'll be absolutely flat out amazed how important this is. When you buy a horse or you're training a horse, you have to know how sensitive the horse is at the first bottom cheek teeth. Because that is critical in learning how to put a bit in the horse's mouth. And there's this whole scene where everyone doesn't want to put a bit in the horse's mouth. But... The bit isn't the problem, it's the use of the bit that's the problem, and this excess flatty tissue in some horses is a problem. And some of these horses go much better without a bit, there's no doubt. But if you have to use a bit in your sport, find out if you have flabby cheeks and make sure the first cheek tooth is rounded up uh, really well, and then put it in a thin diameter bit and then learn how to stay out of the horse's mouth uh, so you're riding with your seat. Um, so that's really it. One of the takeaway messages I want you to remember is somewhere between six months and 12 months, it moves from prevention to correction. And if you're constantly going in there and correcting, so when you float the horse's teeth, the horse goes better, you've corrected something. But if you're floating the teeth when they're in prevention mode, you shouldn't really feel any difference before and after the float. You're trying to keep the horse in that preventive mode. That's the biggest problem for tooth floaters because they go out there and they, and they file the teeth down and everything, everybody's happy. And then the second time they go out, the, the trainer or the rider says, I didn't notice you know, any improvement. 
Well, that's because you didn't have a problem yet. And that's exactly where we want to keep the horse, in the prevention mode. That's the best use of your money. And I'll tell you why. Because at some point, it's insidious, the changes. But once it hits that, that tipping point, the horse now will start to give you some bit problems. But up until that point, it's altering the movement of its jaw and movement of its tongue because it's going to avoid the sharp edges. And it's so minute that you don't know it until the horse is 25 to 30 years old. And that's when you start to see the major problems with either teeth falling out or a lot of other issues. Because the tongue isn't moving, the mouth isn't being cleaned, it's not being maintained. And the tongue is critical. The movement of the tongue everywhere in the mouth is critical for the health of the oral cavity. So that's about it. I covered a, a huge base, but it's really up to your horse to determine how often you have to float the horse's teeth. But a good rule of thumb is around six months for most horses uh, between five years and 25 years of age. After 25, it can be reduced because they just don't get as sharp. Under five, it may be more frequently than every six months. So that's it. Doc T here, and come on back for another uh, podcast in the future. Thanks for joining me. Bye.